Hi friends, it's Joyce. I wanted to begin by thanking you for your sweet birthday wishes. I had a great birthday and I'm so thankful to just feel so much love from each and every one of you. And I'm grateful for the privilege to be able to just share what God has done for me. And my prayer is that that would help empower you in your own walk in your day-to-day -day life. So I don't know about you, but on my birthday, the question that I typically hear is, so how do you feel? You're a year older. Does it feel any different? And you know, for a while there, I'd say, I don't know, it feels exactly the same to me. It's just another day, another year. But I have to be honest in saying that, you know, these past several years, it does feel different to be older. And um, I think the change for me is the fact that I have embraced who I am. So what I mean by that is, you know, I grew up in the church and I was immersed in God's word and I heard great teachings all throughout my life. But you know, the one thing that I completely struggled to believe was how much God really loved me. I mean, I would just think to myself all the time, well, you know, how could he love me though? I make mistakes all the time. And besides, I mean, uh, how do I make the cut? I'm not pretty enough. I'm not smart enough. I don't have all the talents and the abilities of those around me. How could he possibly love someone like me? And I'll tell you what makes it even worse is, you know, I'm the type of person who for a long time really just thrived on people liking me. So heaven forbid there was somebody who didn't appear to like me for who I was. Then the thought came through my mind, well, if someone, you know, who can see me doesn't uh, particularly care for me, then how can God, who I can't even see, how could he possibly love me just as I am? And uh, a few years ago, I remember I had attended a woman's event at our church and uh, our pastor's wife had given us a really neat gifty. I love gifties, I bet you do too. It was a tiara. And you know, when I saw it, I was like, wow, that's so pretty. I can't wait to take that home and just, um, you know, put it on my, uh, you know, table. But it was a whole nother thing when she wanted us to actually take it and place it on our heads and walk around during the event wearing these tiaras. And I felt really funny. And I understood what she was trying to teach us that um, as daughters of the king, we can wear such tiaras because we're his princesses. But I, I just felt so weird because I'm like, but I'm not a princess. A princess is beautiful and elegant and eloquent and I'm not any of those things. And I think the moment that the revelation really struck me as understanding who I am is when I immersed myself in not just reading God's word, but really asking God how he wanted me to apply it to my life. And when we read his word, it tells us exactly who we are. It says that we're his workmanship. It says that we are a royal priesthood, a chosen people. The Bible says how much God loves each and every one of us, so much so that he refers to us as his beloved. And so if there's one thing that I would want to leave you with today is if you are struggling in just being comfortable in your own skin because you're not quite sure if you're good enough as you are, I just want to encourage you, you don't have to take it from me and you don't have to take it from what the folks around you say or what media has to say. You don't have to look any further than the Word of God. Because the Word of God tells you exactly how important you are to God. So much so that he says that even if a strand of your hair falls to the ground, it's not without his knowledge. He loves us so much that his promise is that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And 
I just want to encourage you to dig into God's word for yourself and read exactly how he feels about you, how much he values each and every one of us. He says that we are worth more than rubies. And I hope that this encourages you today. God bless you.